Hello, I'm Zankum Theories, and today I am doing a Breath of the Wild Timeline Theory video. Now, before you watch this video, I recommend that you go watch the latest Breath of the Wild trailer video, because I'm going to mention some stuff from it. In my original video, I theorized that Breath of the Wild took place in a unified timeline, but recently, after watching numerous videos of gameplay, theories, and trailers about Breath of the Wild, I've changed my mind and have come to a different conclusion on where Breath of the Wild takes place. I believe that Breath of the Wild takes place after Skyward Sword in an alternate timeline. You heard me right, Skyward Sword in alternate timelines. One of Skyward Sword's gameplay and storyline elements is time travel. Link uses time shift stones to manipulate the area of time around him in order to solve certain puzzles and he uses the gate of time to travel through time from the present to the past. Simple, right? Not quite. Here's where things get confusing. At the end of Skyward Sword, Link travels back in time and battles the revived Demons. Link defeats the Demon King and seals what's left of him into the Master Sword. Here's where the problem arises. The defeat of Demons in the past doesn't change the present, this, along with some other problems, creates a time paradox. This paradox is never explained in-game or by Nintendo themselves, so in order to see if there was a solution to this problem, I looked up some threads online and couldn't find a solid answer. Some threads agreed that the time travel aspect in Skyward Sword doesn't actually follow a set rule of time travel. If this is the case, this could give Nintendo an excuse to create a new timeline. So first, let me talk about familiar things that appear in Breath of the Wild, such as the Temple of Time. The Temple of Time was originally a temple in the Lanayru Desert that housed one of the two Gates of Time. On page 77 of the Hyrule Historia, it is said that Raru, the Sage of Light, built a new Temple of Time over the remains of the sealed grounds in order to protect the Triforce from those that would misuse its power. In Ocarina of Time, Due to a young Link's actions, Ganondorf was able to enter the Sacred Realm where the Triforce slept and gained ultimate power. The Temple of Time was later used as a sort of base for Link to use to travel back and forth through time via the Master Sword. After the timeline splits, the fate of the Temple of Time in two out of three timelines is falling into decay, and in the adult timeline it is destroyed by King Daphne's Nohansen's wish on the Triforce along with the old Hyrule. However, the Temple of Time in Breath of the Wild is still standing. Not only that, while it looks like the Temple of Time from Ocarina of Time on the outside, inside, it is completely different. This Temple of Time looks like it could have been a church for monks and other people to worship the goddess Hylia as evident by the fact that the statue of the goddess appears inside of the temple. Not only that, on the eastern side of the Great Plateau lies a place called the Eastern Abbey. Abbeys are buildings that are occupied by a community of monks and nuns. In the Breath of the Wild, we do encounter Sheikah monks after completing their trials. But how can this be? Not only was the Temple of Time created as a means to guard the Triforce, but Hylia or anything about her seemed to have been lost some time after Skyward Sword, as she is never mentioned in any of the three timelines. Yet here she has two places named after her, a church dedicated to her and devout followers. Something like this could only be possible in an alternate timeline after Skyward Sword. Still don't believe me? Let's talk about the Sheikah then. The Sheikah were a clan of magic users who served the goddess Hylia and her reincarnations since ancient times. The Sheikah were also known as people who did things in secret, thus gaining various rumors about their deeds and being labeled as Shadow Folk. The fate of the Sheikah varies in all three timelines. In the adult timeline, the Sheikah are extinct. None of the games in the adult timeline mentions the Sheikah, and there are no traces of anything relating to the Sheikah except arguably the Tower of the Gods, but I'll talk about that later. 
In the child timeline, the Sheikah are on the verge of extinction, as the only living member of the race is an elderly woman by the name of Impaz. Finally, in the fallen hero timeline, there doesn't seem to be many Sheikah, but they do still seem to be around given that Impa appears in some games in the fallen hero timeline. However, there are two problems. One is the Sheikah themselves, and two is the Sheikah technology. In Breath of the Wild, the old man says this about the Sheikah. Long ago, an advanced civilization known as the Sheikah inhabited these lands. It was the power and wisdom of the Sheikah that saved this land time and time again. But their civilization disappeared long ago, or so it is said. In Breath of the Wild, the Sheikah are described as wise and powerful, in saving Hyrule countless times. Now, correct me if I'm wrong, but when have the Sheikah saved Hyrule? Oh sure, they had a hand in saving it in games like Ocarina of Time and they link between worlds, but that wouldn't be considered as saving it again and again. Not only that, but when have the Sheikah been considered technologically advanced in any of the three timelines. Surely not the Fall of the Hero timeline where the advancement of technology in Hyrule was nuked back to the medieval ages due to Ganon. Can't be the child timeline since Impaz was the only one left, and in the adult timeline, the Sheikah are gone. I know some adult timeline theorists will mention the Tower of the Gods. To that, I say, well, if the Tower of the Gods is one of their creations, then it was most likely their last, since the Sheikah never appear in the adult timeline. The only time that the Sheikah could have been called technologically advanced is Skyward Sword. The Lanayru Desert is said to have originally been the home of a technologically advanced civilization that used robots to perform mining tasks in the area. Some of the time shift stones that the robots were mining for had the Sheikah eye symbol on them, not only that, notice the two colors that appear with anything in regards to the Sheikah technology in Breath of the Wild. Blue and orange. In Skyward Sword, Imba is shown to use magic that consists of a blue and orange colors. Finally, where would this drastic change in lifestyle come from? Why would the Sheikah, who kept to themselves throughout the Zelda series, suddenly be more open about what they did, and why take such precautions, such as creating the Guardians, in order to protect Hyrule. Now I know people who support the Fallen Hero timeline theory will say that they went so far because of Ganon, and it's certainly credible. But then I ask this, why would they be going to such lengths to protect Hyrule after Ganon had attacked it multiple times? Sure, we could assume that maybe it's because Link after Zelda 2 had been killed, but as the old man stated, the Sheikah had been saving Hyrule again and again. In the Fallen Hero timeline, this isn't the case. Now, in the newest trailer, two things popped up. The first thing was this line from a woman. In it, she says this, The history of the royal family of Hyrule is also the history of Calamity Ganon, a primal evil that has endured over the ages. Now, this could mean one of two things. She either could be talking about the history of Ganondorf or Demise. In Ganondorf's case, ever since the events of Ocarina of Time, Ganondorf's history has been closely tied to the royal family's history, and he has in one form or another endured over the ages such as the adult timeline in the Fallen Hero timeline. In the case of Demise, his history is connected to the royal family due to his history with Zelda's original incarnation, Hylia. Since his spirit along with Zelda's and Link's constantly reincarnates, it could be thought of as him enduring throughout the ages. In both cases, they could be considered as a primal evil that has endured throughout the ages. The other thing that showed up in the trailer was a scene where Zelda is standing in a spring in front of an altar. Sounds familiar? Well it should, 
because it is the sky view spring in Skyward Sword. If you compare the altar in Skyward Sword to the altar in the trailer, you can tell that the two are the same. In the trailer, the altar has the same arch in the middle where the crest of Hylia is supposed to be. It also has the Hylia statue in the middle with the two mini pillars on the side, though one is missing. With all this information, this definitely makes me think that Breath of the Wild takes place in an alternate timeline after Skyward Sword. If it's true, this could mean that the Calamity Ganon is just a new form of demise that has never appeared in any other timeline, except this one for some reason. But before I end this video, I know adult timeline theorists will say it takes place in the adult timeline because of a certain individual appearing in the newest trailer. That individual is the great Deku Tree. Yes, he is back, and because of it, I do admit there is a small possibility that it takes place in the adult timeline. Though again, I think it's a very small one. If you enjoyed this video, please comment, rate, and sub for more. Also, please follow me on Twitter Thank you.